Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Full House Games. You're joining us for round three, which features Jared on the left playing Merfolk and Patrick on the right playing a Dusk Mantle Seer. Uh, sorry, Dusk Mantle Guild, Guild Mage, Mage combo uh, with Minecrank of all things. I'm Caleb House, and of course, joining me is Bo. Hello. Um, this is this is something new. I never thought I'd see happen. But uh, it has. <laughs> this is weird to say the least. I, yeah. I, I quite like it. So it's it's like a bla uh, blue black deck, and it's got. It tries to do it all on their turn. From my understanding, it's it's a dirty combo on their turn. Just hopes to not yeah. die. And I can see that it, it's probably got like some really cool, th it ways to interact. It's got counter spells. It's got strip discard like thought seizing yep. position or something like that. Yep. And then... And, uh... Ghost Quarters as Ghost well. Ghost Quarters, yeah. So, the aim of the game is basically drop a Mind Crank, hope it survives, drop a Dust Mantle Guild Mage, yeah. activate the ability, and put a card from your opponent's library, deck, graveyard, anywhere, yep. into his graveyard. And kill them. And, Bang. yeah, that's, that's how you kill them. Then they deck themselves, or, um, they don't. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Ho ho! Uh, so, this could cause a stalemate with, um, with an Emrakul in deck. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're gonna want to be running Ravenous Traps as well, I guess. Wait, can uh, I... For, for that issue. So, if... if if they have an Emrakul... So what's the what's the guild what's the guild mage say? Uh, the guild mage just pay three mana, and then whenever a card is put into your opponent's graveyard from library this turn, your opponent loses one life. Okay, so that's the kill condition. And mind crank is of course whenever your opponent loses one life, they put a card into their graveyard. So they just mill them out. Yeah, you just mill them out, and but kill them. Uh, they because do... they're losing life every time, they'll die as well, yeah. right? Uh, but, in an infinite life gain deck, like, if you were playing against a pod deck, which, for whatever reason, happened to have a, uh, progenit uh, no, not a progenitus, and a progenitus El Eldrazi or Emrakul. No, a progenitus would cause an infinite loop, but you could kill them. No. no. Um, progenitus will, uh, not go into the graveyard and, uh, stop the combo. No, when I, yeah, I know... I know there's like a mm -hmm. a guy who plays Manalus Dredge mm -hmm. and he plays the Progenitor Stone. You're not meant to do that in the Dredge deck with the Balustrade Spy because it causes an infinite loop and locks the game. Uh, do no, it, it does not cause an infinite loop with Balustrade Spy. No. Because uh, it, it causes an infinite loop with Pain of Servant, uh, which is pretty funny because <laughs> Manalus Dredge just beats out Pain of Servant by yeah. uh, not, not dying to their combo and just causing a draw. No, with Emrakul, what happens is you mm -hmm. mill it, and then the trigger goes on the stack, but you keep milling after that. And when all the millings resolve and there's nothing to mill, the no. trigger shuffles the ball back in. Because it's at nap order, it goes, your trigger of a card was put into the graveyard. Oh, sorry, if you do it in your turn, yeah. then it's going to be at nap order, where the trigger goes on the stack for they lost light. Uh, they put a card into their graveyard, they lost life, and then f uh, after that's happened, then the next mill will happen. But because it's at map order, which is active, non-active player, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Emrakul trigger will go on the stack if it's your, your opponent's turn. Sorry, if it's your turn that you're doing this combo in, your opponent's trigger will go on the stack uh, on top of it, and therefore resolve first, shuffle all your cards back in. If you're running Pod or some other infinite life gain deck with an Emrakul, and you can keep gaining life, otherwise they will die. Yeah, and well, and they will still die to um. I mean, like to that. you're probably gonna kill them anyway because you deal forty damage to them at the very Absolutely. minimum. Absolutely, they're losing a lot of life. Anyway, so but, he... uh, to start off, we have a double Eighth Vial into an Inquisition of Kozilek. And yeah, we kept a of... one lander. Yeah, I mean he mulliganed down to like five. five. And drew a card, and, and and in reality, with an eighth of vial in hand, you can't. It's kind of, it's kind of like, right? it's kind of like a two lander when you have a vial in the land. It's kind of. And he's got a, uh, he's got a curse catcher, yeah. so, he, like, he can still put it into play. Vile, I mean, it's one of the strongest cards that, 
oh, is still legal in Legacy. Yeah, it's still legal in, in Modern. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised by that when I, when I started playing. Abandoned block constructed. <laughs> there you go. That's how powerful it is. Yeah, he, so he takes the Lord here because the Lord's just going to race him and kill him. Yeah, I mean, you had the option of taking the uh, Silver Gill Adept, I guess, mm -hmm. and um, preventing Jared from drawing cards out of the, the hole that he's sort of stuck in. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I, you do just want to do that. And yeah. a Curse Catcher, interesting. He obviously didn't draw a land, but I don't see why you would play a Curse Catcher without using the Aether Vial, unless, of course, you... Oh, he's gonna play have the second one. one. There yeah. you go. That's yeah. why. Um, yeah, so he's obviously drawn that, and uh, that is now on two. Yes. So and we're likely to never see that increase. No. Um, just because... The, the, there's one thing that would happen, which would be a Merorigery, which is a really nice big pump. Uh, so yeah. So he's going to yeah, put that into play and draw. All the cards that he has in hand, you really don't want to... No. To re you don't want to be doing that. I'm not even yeah. sure if he's playing Mary Dree. He probably is. It's probably what the fish decks play. Yeah, I mean, that's your highest curve when you can't play your true name Nemesis, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't think that there's many four drop fish lords. That'd be pretty sweet, though. No, oh, no, wait. There's Merfolk Sovereign, the sweetest of them all. Merfolk tap, Sovereign. Tap to give your creature unblockable. Oh, <laughs> value. Yeah. Actually, one of the funniest things He's I've seen was a, uh, was a wizard, uh, oh. it, it was basically Merfolk, but it was a wizard deck, and you just counter as many spells as you can to get more wizards. And then Did it's like, use Riptide Laboratory? Tap six wizards or whatever, counter a spell. Oh, yeah, yeah, you counter yeah. Spell, yeah. gain a wizard. It's funny. Um... So he's and... kind of dug himself out of a hole here, really. He's got enough, like... Yeah, Jared has a great board presence, but uh, I believe Patrick is transmuting a With card I Demir. don't exactly know. Uh, probably something from Demir. Uh, Demir. Ravnica. Demir originally. guy. Don't really remember his name. Demir Cutthroat, something like that. <sighs> yeah, but he's gone for a Mind Crank, uh, which is a key piece of this deck, because... It is the key piece of this deck, basically. Yes. Uh, what happened? That right? and Dusk Mantle Seer is uh, all you need to win. And uh, those Curse Catchers really aren't going to do anything for him because they only counter instants and sorceries. Mm -hmm. So they're really just teeny tiny beat sticks at the moment. Um, so he goes in for one, two, three, four, five, five damage. That's not too bad. No blocks. Do you... You got a violent a lord here or something? If you've got well, one, he doesn't right? have one because. Oh, that's that's true. That's unfortunate. He's got the regery and he's got a a coral helm. a coral helm, which he'll probably put in at the end of the turn and then and pop then, it and then bump it up. Yeah, yeah. that seems fine. So there's the mind crank, and uh, depending on how much damage Jared can get in here for. We might see Patrick taking game one if he's got a dusk mantle. Mm. I mean, he did just he did just tutor for that mind crank, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I mean that that could be it. All right, here comes the beats. Here comes the smash. Yeah, two land in play means that's going to be a uh, three three with flying. Yep, he's going to pump Crazy. it up. Crazy, and uh, Mero Regery coming in is uh, going to make things even worse for his opponent here. If he puts that in, it could be game. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen damage. If mm. he if he vials in that regery, so I mean it could be pretty brutal. But uh, he hasn't swung for a whole lot. Patrick has. He hit for five last turn. Yeah, it was it was like I guess five. that is a lot. It's, it's uh, eighteen damage. Yeah, if he's. Oh, Patrick might only be on one here if... Oh, if Jared had have swung with those two... Two curse oh. catches that one turn. Oh, oh goodness. Uh, he's on one, and he draws... No, he vials it in. He vials it in. He he's on one, and he's gonna, he's gonna crank oh, him. That's the dirtiest kind of combo. I know, right? One life. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I'll go to Cordialand. We'll start the chain reaction. So, 
here's where it happens, Dusk Mantle, Mind Crank, we're just going to repeat the process after I hit your land. Whoopsies. That's that's weird. That's that's, pr- that's pretty brutal. Like, you got to feel bad when simply swinging with two creatures would have saved you the game. Yeah. Um, I, I got to wonder here, like, I mean, like, obviously you don't do... Well, it's not obvious, but you probably don't do it when your opponent's got their vial on two, and you're thinking, oh, I've only got a 1-1, one, one, so if I smash with the 1-1 one, one and he flashes a guy, and he blocks yeah. it, then I'm, then I'm down. So, like... What do you, what do you put in the sideboard? What is in the main board? Do you play like cryptic commands and stuff as well? Is that too greedy for this kind of a deck? I don't know. You're not. Yeah, it's it's really hard to say because this is not legacy Merfolk. This is modern Merfolk. No, I was talking you about the Dusk Mantle deck. Oh, okay. Do you play cryptic commands in this? Is that greedy? Maybe. That's, maybe. That, that's cool. I mean, it would have been good in. Uh, Patrick's position if you could just tap down all his creatures and bounce one of those Aether Vials just to really strand his opponent there mm-hmm. um, and I guess they're just talking about the combo here which is totally gross I don't think Jared has anything to use against it really like yeah I think he just has to play the racing game pretty much which not it's not that hard for a fish deck to do, you know, they just Voltron, they go one guy, two guy, three guy, four, smash you all the way. One fish, red fish, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Yeah. Punch you in the face. Um, there is there is a blue fish. He's yeah. A goblin fish, I think. <laughs> all right, sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's Jared's line of play here. Um, he can't really be running any kill spells because... Unless he kills that uh, Dusk Mantle Seer in response to... I think he's got... Um, what is it? It's uh, Dismember, and I think he's also got Jite. Yeah. Oh, no, Jite's banned. Sorry. But... Uh, he might have Vapor Snag as well. That's another... Va- good Vapor one. Snag is, is... No, because it's creature, isn't it? Not permanent. You, yeah, it's you need some way of dealing with that Mind Crank. You can't deal with the Dusk Mantle Seer because he'll just vial it in or play it. Uh, whenever he wants on his turns. Uh, well, like, Vapor Snag is an instant, so he can always bounce it in response. But it's a... it's a, Oh, that's right, yeah, it's the activated ability. It's a trigger um, that you just put on the stack. So it's, yeah. it's Mind Crank that you really need to worry about. Maybe he has Pithing Needle? I could see him playing yep. Pithing Needle yep. in this kind Pithing of a deck. Pithing Needle is, is, is definitely something you want to bring in if you're Jared here. Uh, maybe some Phyrexian Revokers if you've got them. Yeah, if you're a fish player, do you play Phyrexian Revoker because you can buy it oh, in? I mean... Uh, That's a very frustrating combo to deal with, I should it's mention. A, it's a D&T sort of deal, so... Yeah, you really want to be the blue d and at, at this stage. Yeah. I guess that's one of your outs. Yeah, I mean... And then um, what do you bring in against fish? Because fish is... A, it's a fairly straightforward deck. It just wants to play dudes and smash you with them. It's not trying to mm. infinite combo or be too intricate. Do you do you keep something in your sideboard for like one of those sorts of um, frustrating decks? Maybe an ensnaring bridge. I couldn't see ensnaring bridge working against this. It's only got a bunch of guys with three power, which means you got to dump your hand as quick as possible. Yeah, but if he if he hasn't, well, Patrick really didn't have that much in hand, right? He played land every turn, which was yeah. three cards. He played two Aether Vials, and he was transmuting. I mean, transmute doesn't really get it out of your hand, but... No. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he did play everything when he wanted to, and uh, if Merfolk play enough Lords, Ensnaring Bridge is going to help you. Mm-hmm. Because they are... They pump course, too big. Yeah, too swollen. Too mm-hmm. many guns mm-hmm. uh, on those crazy fish people. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Jared's got to really find a balance of here's my beat stick punch. Mm-hmm. And and just needs to hit Patrick with it as, as, hard, as, as hard as he can, just as quickly as possible. I've had a wonderful experience with ensnaring bridge against, well... I was playing Fish, and Justin Robb was playing mm-hmm. uh, Miracles. Boy, was that fun. He had to, like, he just, he, he had three cards in his hand. He goes to uh, disenchant his own ensnaring bridge to force a Willet to have no cards in hand so I couldn't attack him. 
That's pretty good. That's a good play. Yeah, we went to time even though his Jace was on uh, was on thirteen counter. That is a valuable play right there. <laughs> he couldn't kill me because I had too many cards in my hand for his Jace ultimate to work. Nice. <laughs> Sick value. That's what we call it in the business. Yeah. Um, all right, so I, I really takes... like this Duck Commando combo. Yeah, he's I taking mean, a mulligan. If, you, if you're too slow, then it's it's you know bad for you. It's not the fastest combo, but it's nice to see something coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, it's something unique, something that's not too. It's weird, but it's it feels like it could shake it up a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably put it around the tier two, tier three mark. I mean, you can yeah. shoot it for whatever you need. I do like that it's got the uh, transmute cards. This is sweet. Yeah, and muddle the mixture. Wow, so powerful a card when you can just be like. Well, I did need to transmute this, but that's a really powerful spell and it's going to blow me out of the water, so no. Yeah, I mean... And you're main decking it too, so th that's even better. Card is uh, limited, it is pointed in Highlander, you know? Yeah, just, to, just to prove how good it is. It has points attached to it. You know, you know what, what other cards have points attached to them? True Name <laughs> Nemesis. Does that it has a point now? It has a point now. Yeah. Really, I know it's such a dumb card. Well, I know why they what they trans do. They go they transmute for their time ball voltaic key piece. Uh, yeah, gross. and uh, again we have the double aether vial, turn one. Oh my god! Second verse, same as the first. Yeah, game game two and game one are looking surprisingly similar, but let's hope it's got a different outcome for Jared. I think he's got a cavern of souls naming Merfolk. Oh, one would one would hope so. I mean. You could always name humans, right? Yeah. Uh, you could name horror if you got Phyrexian Revoker. <laughs> if you wanted. Yeah. And I've, 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 I'll reveal a lord. I've named some weird stuff with that card when I when it didn't matter. I named like. I named like Badger a couple of times. Nice. I think Master of the Pell Trident. Uh, you've got to be really careful with that and Lord of Atlantis. If you have both. You want to discard your... Lord of Atlantis. Lord of Atlantis. Yeah, because, because... Lord of Atlantis, like the old Slivers, is symmetrical. <laughs> it pumps your other guys. It's yeah. great. Uh, uh, I, I ran into that once. I took a guy's uh, uh, Master of the Pearl Trident over his Lord of the Atlantis, and he swung into me, and I chomp walked with a merfolk, and he's like, all right, your merfolk dies. I'm like, uh, sorry, your mutavolt dies. I'm like, no, nah, your, your guy's giving me the bonus too. <laughs> He was not particularly happy about it. It's pretty funny. It's it's a very entertaining card when you go into like the Lord Mirror match. Yeah. So is that a spell skite? That is a spell skite, and they. Uh... That's probably to draw away the. Oh, of course. It's, it's a, it's of course to deal with any hate that Jared might have, but. Uh... I, I don't think Jared can really bring in any hate. I mean, Dude. there's no blue destroy an artifact. Do you think, do you think that's main board or do you think it's sideboard? I'd say it's probably a sideboard card, but uh, it's quite possibly main board as well. Is that spreading seas? Yes, it is. Take you off black. Interesting. Don't forget to draw a card. He has, but uh, I don't know if I really liked spreading seas in this. I think spreading seas. Well, spreading seas is generally a main board card. It's like. Yeah. Because remember, he, w when he saw it, he was playing the fast lands and he was playing the pain lands. He didn't see any basic. And yeah, I think that's that, fair enough. I think Patrick knows not to go grab a basic, not to play them, play them as late as you can. Yeah, I think you need to sideboard in some more of your control in this sort of matchup. Your spells, you know, your spell pierces, spell snares, yep. that sort of deal. That's what you really have to have. So here's a lord, and that was for three, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Curse Catch is not a lord, unfortunately. Cry error time. What do you think about putting uh, Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas, in this deck, in, in, in Patrick's? Because it's, it's got enough artifacts, right? Is that greedy? It's probably greedy. Um, it's probably a little bit greedy. Uh, there's the Ghost Quarter that we saw uh, cripple the opponent last time. There's the Crank. Oh, no. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah it's on the stack. Crank. I don't, know, I don't think there's enough like really cheap counter spells in. I think Jared just flooded out to play that island, and that's not something you can really do because you need to keep up your 
your spell pierce that's in hand to... Did he have one? Uh, I think he does. Yeah, oh, yeah he's yeah, got he one. Does. He uh, couldn't have spell pierced then because he has two mana to spare, but yeah. even still, it's like, you probably should have. You really need it. And Th this is one of the faults of the fish deck is that while it wants to play as many islands as it can, it really also wants to play like Cavern of Souls and Muta Vaults and mm. in Legacy you want to play Wastelands and Mishra's Factories and these, you get into tough situations where you don't have enough blue mana to deal with their stuff. Yeah, it's really difficult. Like here, he's going to Phantasmal Image, copy that guy. Why is his Aether Vial tapped? Um, I probably would have Aether Vial that in. I think he wants to do something with it, maybe. No idea. He might not have untapped from last turn, I think. I don't think he's got anything to cheat in, so... Mm -hmm. I don't really know what he's done. But he could have left that he, blue mana how, open. How much did he smash for there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, One, two, three, six, seven, four, five six, seven, uh, eight, 9, 10. 10? 10. 10, yeah, 10. No, 9. Yeah, 10. No, there's two Lord effects. The Lord doesn't pump himself, though. But the Phantasmal Image does, and it's 2-2. Two, two. Did, did but, the game uh, end because he smashed... Oh, yeah, yeah, it does smantle yet again. Um, yeah, I just don't think Jared... Uh, Jared needs to be more aware of that um, that spell pierce, I think, um, was ultimately his his downfall. I mean, Aether Vial's really just good for Patrick in that he can cheat his guys in, mm. but... Um, you see, he did have a Vapor Snag there, but yeah. I think that the Vapor Snag didn't mean anything because of the Spell Sky, right? There's a bit thing it'll mean. Well, yeah, yeah, because of the Spell Sky, it means a lot less, but still, it's it's something you've got to be very aware of and uh, got to be prepared to play against. Like, mm -hmm. you, you need to bounce that guy and then counter if you can and then do everything you can to, to get around it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, that's just how magic goes sometimes. Sometimes you're not fast enough to beat out a combo deck. You know what? But uh, that was round three. Please stay tuned to Full House Games for round four and the uh, the finals of the, the thrilling conclusion to this modern Wednesday.